Okay, thank you very much to the organizers for the possibility to speak here. Uh, so I will I will not speak about random matrices or random graphs. Sorry for this, but we will see at least like some limiting objects for some of random matrices. So I hope that this will not be too off topic. And uh, first of all, let me uh, discuss a little bit what exactly interacting particle systems uh, we will see during this talk. And then my main goals for this talk will be. Uh, to formulate like a couple of asymptotic results for these interacting particle systems and also to discuss certain algebraic structure behind uh, the systems uh, which is useful to proving uh, these asymptotic results so let me start with definition of uh, asymmetric simple exclusion process so this is this four letters asap uh, stand for asymmetric simple exclusion process and uh, this is a system of uh, particles on integers so we have integer we have integers and at every integer we can have either a particle or a whole yeah so it will be either all integers or some subset of integers which uh, the particles can live on and then uh, uh, this uh, somehow uh, choice like for every position whether we have a particle or not this is like the space of configuration uh, of our system and uh, they, then we will study random configurations so these particles will evolve as uh, according to certain quite simple rules and uh, these rules will infer, will uh, include certain randomness so we will get a random configuration after uh, like some time uh, so what are these rules uh, so there are two ways to describe them uh, and i will actually i will use both of them so a slightly simpler a slightly simpler way is to say that every particle in our system has two independent poisson processes attached to it and one of these poisson process is of uh, rate one and another poisson process is of rate q which is uh, uh, less than one or greater than zero or greater or equal than zero and then uh, like uh, these uh, pairs of Poisson processes are independent for every particle and then we use these Poisson processes in the following way so these Poisson processes are uh, live on uh, reals uh, on, on positive reals or Poisson processes on um, positive reals of these intensities and we use uh, these Poisson processes in the following way so whenever we have a point uh, from a process of rate one this particle tries to jump by one to the right and when from this process we uh, this particle tries to jump by one to the left so the jumps to the left occur uh, less frequently than jumps to the right and we also have uh, the following exclusion rule so which stands for this uh, exclusion in asap so if the position is occupied by another particle then the jump does not happen either to the right or to the left so all such uh, attempts to jump are blocked and whenever the neighbor to the right or to the left uh, like is uh, absent then this jump can happen whenever we uh, we get a point from uh, this Poisson processes uh, so then then like uh, the like uh, yeah one can study so we start with certain uh, initial configuration then this particle tries to start to jump according to this like uh, collection of independent Poisson processes and uh, one can study what happens with uh, such a configuration after some time t so this is a continuous time process uh, and like what one can say about this configuration after uh, some time and so this is one way to describe it i will use it will be more convenient for me to use it another way which is equivalent so this is exactly the same process uh, but instead of like attaching Poisson processes to particles i will attach Poisson uh, processes to pairs of neighboring positions uh, so i will have actually uh, somehow one Poisson process attached to every pair of neighboring positions like this like this like this and all these Poisson processes will have rate one and then the rule will be that whenever we have a point from Poisson process coming uh, and then we do the following update so if we have particle on the left and hole to the right then the particle must jump to the right with probability one and then if we have particle on the right and hole on the left then the particle must jump to the left with probability q or with probability one minus q nothing is changing so this q is participating only here poisson process will have rate one and uh, if we have two particles or two holes then nothing is changing so this is uh, yeah it's very easy to check that this is uh, this defines uh, exactly the same dynamics on the space of configurations uh, but this will be more convenient like this second description will be more convenient for me and it will be more convenient for me for quite uh, simple reason 
So here I have particles and holes, and then okay, I described how particles are moving, uh, like uh, yeah, jumping right to the left. But when I look at this picture, I can say that instead of uh, thinking about particle and hole, I can think about uh, just like two types of particles, so that I have like black particle and white particle, and then they interact according to certain rules. So these rules are not uh, symmetric. So uh, we see that uh, depending on the order, so this particle will jump with probability one if this uh, update uh, is occurring and like it jumps to the left with probability q uh, which is less than one so this is asymmetric yeah so this stands for symmetric and simple exclusion process uh, but other than this yeah so this is also like possible to yeah just uh, run this definition for more than two types of particles uh, so i need uh, just i just need certain linear order so if i have just like two types of particles i can call that uh, they're like smaller according to this linear uh, order is like a particle and a greater is whole and then I have these rules. Uh, but now let me assume that I have more than one, more than two types of particles. And actually, so it's impossible for me like to always use the word type and I will use actually a completely like uh, as a synonym, I will use classes of particles, colors of particles or species of particles. So I will use all these four words but just like to uh, uh, like denote uh, like uh, this um, yeah, type of particle. And so, yeah, returning to this, so instead of having just like particles and holes, I can have like uh, particles of three different types, let us say, so black, gray, and white. And I just need to have certain linear order on the types of particles. And then I can run exactly the same definition. So if I have linear order, I look at two neighboring positions like here, and then I look what, what of these types of particles is smaller and then which of them is larger. And uh, somehow the smaller type, I will think about it as, as like a stronger particle that jumps to the right uh, with probability one. So I use the left uh, picture in order to determine uh, the update. And if uh, the stronger particle is to the right, then it jumps with probability Q to the left and with probability one minus Q it remains the same. So what I did, I defined this asymmetric simple exclusion process uh, for particles of different types. And okay, so for so this Q participates. This is somehow one of the main parameters of uh, all these uh, questions. So in one Q equals zero, one says that this is totally asymmetric update, totally asymmetric simple exclu exclusion process. So this is called TASIA. Uh, so let me uh, start with, like with uh, yeah, just with some specific example. So let me consider multi-type TASIA, so Q equals zero, on positive integers. And uh, I will consider the uh, like TASEP when I have many, many types of particles and uh, actually for every position. So like my starting configuration is here. This will be my initial configuration. So I uh, say that there is type one particle at uh, the leftmost position here. Yeah? So it's positive integer. So this is the leftmost position. Then type two is at the second position type three is at the third position and so on. So this is my initial configuration. And then I start this Poisson processes start to yeah to click. I start to update, I start to use these rules. So uh, according to definition in, for, for every pair of neighboring positions, I have a Poisson process of rate one. And whenever like some point uh, arrives from this Poisson process, I need to apply these update rules. And these update rules in the case of Q equals zero, they are just uh, like they become even simpler. So when Q equals zero, then uh, this update is not happening. So I can ignore all these situations. But the only thing that I'm doing is like this. So if I have a smaller particle on the left and larger particle on the right, then it jumps one step to the right. So if I start with this configuration, so what can happen? Okay, something uh, starts to happen very quickly. So, for example, if first update has happened between uh, positions two and three, then two is smaller than three, then two jumps to uh, to the right, and three must yeah, jump to the left. So they exchange places, and this will be a, this is possible configuration after first update. So that I have one, three, two, and then four, five, six, seven. And then, of course, like uh, these uh, points start coming from all Poisson processes for all neighboring positions, and the configuration starts to uh, update uh, like according to this rule. So after several updates, we can have something like this. So 
for example, one uh, and three was uh, was updated at some point. So one jumped to the right and three jumped to the left, to the leftmost position. Then two jump, or then for example, four and four and five were exchanged. And then after this two and five were exchanged, so we got five to four, these three positions. And then like six went somewhere to the right and eight come from uh, the right to the left. So after several updates, uh, this configuration becomes, yeah, it becomes more complicated than uh, this configuration, uh, like something is happening, something random is happening. And then one can ask what, what exactly is happening. So what can we say about this random configuration after some large time t? So in order to describe this configuration, so I can think about this as a permutation. Uh, okay, in my case, it's infinite permutation. So I have positive integers and I started, uh, so as I said, I like types of particles are also labeled by uh, positive integers. And initial configuration is just that at position uh, 58, we have a particle of type 58. Yeah, so it's an identity permutations. If I will map like position of particle of type I, uh, yeah, so like I will denote, okay, formally I, I encode my configurations uh, by, by infinite permutations. Uh, so for uh, int positive integer i, I uh, denote by pi of i a position of uh, pi, like a position uh, of particle of type i at uh, this configuration. So originally, I, this is just identity configure, uh, identity uh, permutation. Uh, so like 58 is mapped to a 58, 100 is mapped to 100. But for example, for this configuration, yeah. So this is uh, like one is mapped to two because particle of type one is standing on second position. Two is mapped to four. Yeah, and yeah, so forth, so forth. So I have certain infinite permutation which uh, describes this configuration, and this is uh, also a random permutation because I, the randomness comes from all these Poisson processes. Yes, they create certain random infinite permutation. And uh, after time t, I will uh, denote the configuration by pi, yeah, by pi uh, of t. Uh, this will be a random configuration after time t of this multi-type tasep on positive integers. Are there any questions? Okay, so what can I, what what can I say about this um, uh, this uh, random permutation? So one can ask many questions. Uh, so let me uh, let me start with something uh, which I think is uh, yeah quite immediate once the definitions are uh, clear. So what happens with particle one? So let me let, let us uh, start with this. So what happens with particle of type one? So it starts here. So it's position at uh, uh yeah so, so, it, so it starts here and then it okay so what i am claiming that it, 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 that it is doing a simple random work so it just jumps to the right according to Poisson processes of rate one uh, so why is the why is it like this because particle of type one it's somehow the strongest particle it doesn't see the difference between all these like twos threes and 58s so one is smaller than all of them, and this is the only information that we need for this rule. So it, it, it just cares about in your order if particle one is smaller than uh, whatever other particle is uh, to the right of it, uh, then interacts it with exactly the same way. So one interacts with four in the same way as one interacts with uh, 58. Which means that particle one ju just moves to the right, uh, and like the only uh, somehow probabilistic information uh, here is uh, like when exactly this particle is told to jump to the right, like, like these jumps will always occur. And uh, these jumps, yeah, they happen according to Poisson process of rate one. And then, okay, okay, asymptotically, so it's it's a precise statement, yeah, so about like connection with Poisson process at time t, but asymptotically it moves uh, to the right with speed one, which is like a rate of Poisson process, so it's, it will be at time t, and then divided by square root of t, so like, yes, this is the number of uh, points uh, in uh, the Poisson process, uh, like in the interval of uh, uh, from zero to t, yeah, so it satisfies uh, like, a, yeah, it's a, a usual central limit theorems, yeah, because it can be split it into I many independent uh, random variables like from interval 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, and so on. And so we can, like, by the very uh, standard classical central limit theorem, we get that the position of particle of type 1 at time t is, uh, yeah, so it's a Gaussian distribution with center at t, and okay, so the variance uh, is uh, here also 1. 
so this is what is happening uh, with particle one. So it doesn't really feel all these like nu nuances, like how this like exclusion process works. So there is no like exclusion rule for particle of, uh, for the strongest particle. Uh, so uh, let us ask the next question. So what happens with particle one and two together? Uh, or like what happens with particle two? And to answer this, I need to recall the definition of Gaussian unitary ensemble. Uh, so, okay, probably very quickly because I think yeah, many people know this. Uh, so, Gaussian unitary ensemble, despite the name, this is a Hermitian matrix and uh, not unitary. And uh, yes, yeah, so, so this Hermitian matrix with uh, basically independent entries to uh, like on and above diagonal uh, and uh, with Gaussian components. So, a little bit yeah, more formally, so we take uh, two collections of uh, standard Gaussian random variables, and then uh, we uh, yeah we put uh, like on uh, diagonal uh, only real random variables, and then uh, like for complex numbers we take a sum of like uh, a sum of two random variables yeah in this way uh, multiplied by imaginary unit divided by square root of two, and then we uh, conjugate it when we uh, speak uh, when we do this for uh, entries uh, below the diagonal. So this is a Gaussian unitary ensemble, and moreover, so if I fix this uh, collection of independent uh, identically distributed uh, uh, Gaussian random variables, so this is also a coupling of all these uh, matrices. So I do this, I can do this for uh, for a matrix of size k, and I do I can do this somehow simultaneously for all k. Uh, so if I use yeah, if I fix uh, this probability space, this will give me somehow a coupling of all Gaussian unitary ensembles. So I, for a matrix of size k, I can consider eigenvalues of uh, this uh, of this matrix. So this will be lambda one k, lambda two k, up to lambda k k. So in this order, and then uh, these eigenvalues are also cup. Uh, yeah, they are also coupled. They uh, defined on the same probability space for all possible values of k. So they have some some uh, well-defined joint distributions for uh, various k. And uh, then uh, it is known, like the the uh, result about like uh, standard tensor. So when I say standard, it's just like there are only particles and holes, uh, and there are somehow much more results av available about like these uh, standard systems rather than these multi-type systems that I will uh, discuss today. So uh, uh, the known results about tensor with k particles. So if one assumes that one has k particles on uh, integers, just like yeah, uh, uh, for example, five particles and everything else are holes. Uh, and if uh, one denotes uh, the positions of these particles by x1, x2, xk, and then at time t they will have like, like yeah, their positions at time t. And uh, if one starts with a configuration when uh, they uh, like they stand in one block, all these k particles stand in one block, and then okay, well, this Poisson process again starts to to be to to, to run, and these particles jump only to the right, yeah, so this is a particles jump only to the right. So what happens with these particles? And then uh, the first particle is actually, uh, it's quite uh, clear, I would say that it, it, it doesn't feel like all the particles to the left, yeah? So whenever like this particle, the second particle tries to jump to the first one, it is blocked by exclusion rule. And this is the same particle, so they, can, they are not swapping places. The first particles always remain uh, in the first place. So this first particle moves with, uh, like again, like just like as, as Poisson pro points from Poisson processes coming, the, this particle moves uh, to the right, so it's a simple uh, random work, and it will converge to uh, like a Gaussian random variable. But the second particle already it's sometimes blocked by the first particle, and the third particle sometimes blocked by the second. And while it's like it's not uh, so obvious whether this affects uh, fluctuations uh, or not, like in, in the limit, okay, it, so it's well known, of course, that it, it, this does affect this exclusion rule does affect uh, limiting distribution. And the result of Baryshnikov is that uh, these positions of particles of k particles uh, actually converge to eigenvalues of a Gaussian unitary ensemble, or sometimes people say, when we, because of, yes, I said that we consider this for all k simultaneously, so this is sometimes called a GV minor process. Uh, so what we will need from it, we will need the smallest eigenvalue, so like lambda kk. And it is uh, known that 
uh, the positions of these particles. So they, uh, on the level of low large numbers, exclusion is not uh, visible. So it's always around the point, uh, around the time t, yeah, position around the position t. And then divided by square root of t, it converges to uh, lambda 1, 1, lambda 2, 2, lambda k, k, where this lambda yeah, j, j are the ones from GV minor process. So the, this, this is the result about TACEP, like the standard TACEP with uh, K particles. Are there any questions? Okay. okay since no questions, uh, uh, I will uh, use this result. So this is um, about standard TACEP in order to address the questions that I started with. Uh, so what happens with particles from one, two, three, four, up to K? in this process and then uh, somehow one can see like yeah the connection with the previous question uh if i will uh, forget somehow like the i will just say that particles from one to k are just like my particles like uh i will just i will not distinguish between them so i will say that this is like uh one like big type of particles from one to k and everything that is greater than k i will call like holes so i will not distinguish between particles that are uh, between one and k, and I also do not distinguish between particles uh, which are like from k plus one to infinity. So I, I, I will only care whether the type of particles is less than k or greater than k. And then the behavior, for example, of particles one, two, three, or like better like the this like the, the set of positions when these three particles are occupied at, at, at uh, any given moment, it 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 uh, it moves according to the rule of standard TACEP. So this is somehow very important basic idea how to deal with these multi-type processes so we can always we can in various ways couple them with uh, standard uh, taseps and then we know and then uh, these uh, three particles for example if i if i care like yeah k equals three then these three positions where these three particles stand they will be exactly uh, where the three particles from tasep stand and then it's also very easy to show that they will be like if I, for example, start here yeah, one, two, three, then they will be eventually uh, interact between themselves and they will be ordered eventually from k to one. So it will be one will be at the rightmost particle, two will be at the second rightmost, and three will be at the third rightmost. So it's um, uh, it, it it can be shown uh, very easily. And then uh, one applies this result about standard TASEP and gets the following claim that. Uh, the positions, yeah, the joint distribution of the positions where the particles from one to, for example, five stand, will converge to five, uh, yeah, five eigenvalues from GV minor process, yeah, so five smallest eigenvalues from uh, GV minor process. Uh, so this is basically the combination of definitions and the result of uh, Baryshnikov about uh, TASEP with K particles. Uh, so so far we somehow do not see the probably do not see like the uh, like how this picture uh, somehow produce something uh, non-trivial. So let's uh, go into this and let me ask uh, the following question. Uh, so, okay, so I know like what happens with first K fixed particles, but now let me ask a little bit different question. So what I can say about the distribution of type of particle which stands in position number one, let us say. After time T, of course, originally I see yeah, that the type one stands here, but uh, like after time t, what particle stands here? What can say? What I say about the so this is some random type. So what I can say about the distribution of this uh, random type of particle? And this is something how the question which I don't know how to answer. Like yeah, like everything that I did before, it was like more or less by hand and okay, using one like a known result about TASEP. But this type of result is not something that is, is something that I don't know how to answer. Just like yeah, just like by uh, some yeah some naive argument so to say uh, so however we will see and uh, that there is a very uh, simple argument which answers this question but this requires certain algebraic structure which is behind uh, this type of systems and uh, this structure will present will give us the following result so let me first say this by words so it will say it will uh, tell us that the distribution of the type of particles which, which stand at position one after time t it has exactly the same distribution as uh, position of particle of type one. Yeah, so these are two very seemingly very different things. One thing is like where the particle of type one is, 
So it's some, yeah, we know very well it's a, it's doing simple random work. And then another thing, what type of particle stands at position one? And uh, I claim that the day distribution at given time t, these distributions are equal to each other. And in principle, this I would say this should be a little bit surprising because as the processes in t, yeah, they, they are very different. Because okay, particle of type one is just moves to the right uh, with increment one. So yeah, it's doing simple random work, and with increment one, it uh, yeah, it gradually moves to uh, to the right. So the type of particle which stands at the leftmost position is something very different. So for example, we see that here it, it, it changed by jump two. This already shows that as a process, there is no chance that this uh, will give the same. This will be the same process. So and in, in principle, when the time grows. Uh, the type of particles here it behaves in the following way. So it's the same type for quite some time, and then it's, it makes a huge jump. Then again, it's, it's the same for some time, it is, and then again, it makes a huge jump. So this is a very different process. This is a very different random process, and still, uh, I claim and uh, will prove that uh, the type of particle uh, at given time t, the distribution of type of particle which stands at this leftmost position, is exactly the same as. Uh, the as distribution of uh, where like this uh, position where w w w distribution of position of particle of type one and uh, it also works not only for particle of type one it also works for like first k positions so one can prove this is actually like more like a proposition or like lemma uh, that uh, the types of uh, particles which stand at positions from one to k. So this pi t inverse means that yes, yeah, so pi was positions to uh, types of particles to positions, and pi inverse is uh, positions to types of particles. So pi inverse of one is uh, inverse. This is uh, the type of particle which stands at position one, and pi inverse of k is type of particle which stands at position k. So from the previous uh, from the previous asymptotic statement and certain algebra, which I will speak about, it will follow that the types of particles at first k positions also converge to uh, a GV minor process, yes, to the smallest eigenvalues of a GV minor process. And this is a statement only yeah, for like one time. So it's for, for uh, several times, there is no hope that such statement holds, but for one time, this, uh, this holds. Uh, so yes, and moreover, yeah, one has in general that pi t is equal in distribution by to pi t inverse, uh, and uh, yeah, this is something which uh, I will discuss. This is a certain motivation, uh, and I yeah, and this I think is a certain motivation like to study algebraic structure because this is such, such type of a quote. I think it's at least very hard to prove probabilistically, and I would be actually very interested to see any proof uh, like probabilistic proof that. Uh, such a thing holds, but with the uh, but uh, yeah, you, with the use of a little bit of algebra, it's a very simple corollary of uh, this statement, which is essentially a known result of Baryshnikov from 20 years ago. Uh, so, are there any questions? Okay, so now I let let, let me uh, go to uh, algebraic structure and. Uh, yeah, so which allows to say such probabilistic things, yeah, like which, which allows to prove qualities like this. So let me recall the rules of uh, uh, of my multi-type systems, uh, and now I will try. I will, I will reformulate them uh, algebraically. And for this, I need to recall what is a Hecke algebra. Uh, so let uh, let me start with a symmetric group. So W is a symmetric group of n elements. And then SI are uh, nearest neighbor transpositions. So SI is a transposition which permutes I and I plus one. And then L of W is the number of inversions in W. Uh, so this is information about uh, symmetric group. And now I'm defining the Hecke algebra. So algebra is a, yeah, so this is a vector space with a associative multiplication on it. On it. Which uh, satisfies yeah all like usual rules about multiplication and addition, uh, and uh, yeah in order to define vector space I say that I have a linear basis with elements which are labeled by permutation. So this vector space has dimension n factorial, 
and the basis basis vectors are yeah are denoted by t sub w uh, where w is a fermentation so there are n factorial of them and then there are certain like i would say okay probably fairly simple or like certain like okay, quite specific rules for uh, multiplication of this basis uh, basis elements not all of them but some of them namely if i multiply by like element like vector which which uh, corresponds to nearest neighbor transposition to arbitrary uh, basis vector tw then i have one of the following two things happening on and then if the number of inversions somehow increases with when i in like in permutation as w compared to w so if i have permutation w and i transpose two neighboring integers the number of inversions either increases by one or decreases by one so these are these two cases and if it increases by one then the product of two basis vectors will give me just like t as w so the third uh, basis vector which corresponds to permutation as w and when uh this is not the case when this is uh, the number of inversions decreasing then one will get uh one minus q times tw plus q times tsw so it is known that okay so this is not this is not a trivial fact that these uh, rules give us somehow um, a coherent somehow definition of multiplication why this is actually yeah this is certain like theorem uh but extremely well known from like uh, basic uh textbooks uh, from algebra and uh, yeah it, like once we know that uh, this multiplication is associative, yeah, we can apply uh, these rules and yeah, multiply arbitrary linear uh, combinations of these uh, basis uh, elements. Uh, so, and probably already now it's quite visible that this form is very, very similar to this rule. And actually, this is tautologically the same. So, it's just like two different uh, languages to describe exactly the same thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, one can somehow try to profit probabilistically from applying like some known algebraic information about this object, about Hecke algebra. And at least like as for now, for me, somehow the most useful probabilistic tool is the following very, again, very basic algebraic fact that there is somehow an untrivial uh, involution on this or in the Hecke algebra. So involution which sends uh, element TW to TW inverse. And this is a linear map, so like linear combination of elements TW should be sent to linear combination of TW inverse. And involution means that uh, when I, so this is also like somehow works uh, nicely with multiplication. So if I apply this involution to a product of elements, I will get the product of uh, yeah, involution applied to every of these elements. And then very crucially, they multiply it in a different order, so in the opposite order. So if here, so the multiplication is by no means commutative, but of course this is not commutative. And if here I multiply it from H1 to HR, yes, so I'm multiplying from right to left, then here I will, I will have to multiply from HR to H1, or better to say from I of HR to I of H1. So this is not a misprint. This is exactly a very crucial property of uh, this um, involution. And then this is basically, okay, so uh, saying it uh, <laughs> quickly, I will probably need to repeat this, but this evolution is exactly the reason why one can say that this equality holds, uh, that the existence of this algebraic algebraic evolution will Im immediately implies such equalities, which yeah, it's hard to see probabilistically from where they appear. Uh, but let me uh, yeah, let me move a little bit slowly, slower. Uh, so uh, how yeah, how exactly this so so far this slide yeah, contains some algebraic information about like this Hecke algebra. So how uh, probability appears? Uh, one can probably think about simple random work in Z2, for example. Yeah, so like random works on groups in general. So we have a certain set of generators. Yeah, and in the case of uh, uh, simple, if uh, in the case of simple random work in Z2, these are uh yeah moving one step to the right one step to the left uh, to the left one step uh top one step uh below uh, so these are generators uh, and then uh this like random simple random work on z2 that this can be uh, one can say that this is like yeah a random work on uh, on z2 as a group so we multiply or like in the in a billion case one one says add uh these uh, generator elements so here we are doing exactly the same so we have certain set of generators so like abstractly this can be anything g1 gk and then if we have a random position at some time so we define for example a certain like continuous time random work then we attach Poisson processes to 
uh, independent process processor to each of these generators and whenever the uh, like the beep yeah the size the signal comes the point comes from one of these poson processes we multiply by uh, this generator uh, our current our current our current random element uh, of uh, hecke algebra yeah so if i want to define random of hecke algebra then i multiply my uh, generators to uh, current positions and then i get some random elements in the hecke algebra uh, so of course, like it's crucial that this multiplication yeah, it, it comes from Hecke algebra, and uh, these um, and this somehow like the trajectory is very specific, like how to how this multiplication works. So it's it's very different from like a billion group, of course. And then like somehow the second step, which is uh, also like needed, is that if uh, my element of Hecke algebra has uh, the following form, so if it's uh, it can decomp it can be decomposed into linear bases with uh, some uh, non-negative coefficients, which are summed up to one, then like every element of Hecke algebra of this form uh, can be used to produce a random permutation, yeah, random element of W, W is a symmetry group for us, so random permutation of um, yeah of numbers from one to n. So one element of Hecke algebra gives also a probability measure on symmetry group a random permutation so there are somehow two sources of randomness one source of randomness is uh, here so this is uh, uh this poson processes which are attached to generators and another one is here so from even from deterministic element of Hecke algebra we get a random element of a uh, symmetry group and actually the second source is actually more important than the first one uh but okay so in our picture both of them exist and now uh it's actually um, possible to yeah, directly check that uh, there these two ways that I described. So I described certain random open Hecke algebra, and then I described previously like these jumping particles of various types. This is just exactly the same thing. So it's, I just used two different languages, but this is exactly uh, the same thing. This is tautologically the same uh, objects if I use generators which are correspond to nearest neighbor transpositions. So if, if I might, if as my set of generators, I'll take this uh, linear basis vectors which corresponds to nearest neighbor transpositions and uh, then uh, I will be, I will have exactly the same process and here is even like some small vocabulary yes yeah? so if I have like this multi type configuration this will be just like one element of Hecke algebra then these update pictures that I have here these update pictures will be exactly the same uh, multiplication rule by TS by the uh, nearest neighbor transposition uh, element and then uh, the ASAP evolution, like the always more species, ASAP evolution will be uh, given by this like random walk on Hecke algebra. And uh, then like using this algebraic connection, one can in particular use this evolution. Uh, and also like, yeah, also like this operation, which I also use somehow when I, when I spoke about like not distinguishing between particles from one to K and separately not distinguishing all particles which are greater or equal than K plus one. So this also has some uh, nice uh, algebraic meaning. Uh, and in principle, one can play this game not only for symmetric group, one, one can play uh, this game for other coxter groups, but okay, let me not go into this. Uh, so, uh, okay, some references are uh, in place. So in principle that like, because this is tautological language, so this is in principle present in uh, quite a few papers. So I think the earliest that I found uh, uh, is this one, like Aras Wittenberg from 93. Uh, but I think what is like somehow not uh, well appreciated is that um, somehow this is very useful for asymptotic applications. Uh, somehow, despite the fact that algebraically, yeah, this is tautologically the same, this was realized, but it wasn't like that much use for asymptotic questions. And it wasn't used to this to an extent that in certain probabilistic works, uh, this was somehow like rediscovered independently, all this like involution property of Hecke algebra. It was uh, somehow just proved by some induction and like it's possible to do this. So somehow it was observed, I, I guess, in computer simulations and then proved by induction. But what was important is that it was like later used for certain like very interesting and trivial probabilistic applications. And this is like in uh, this series of proofs. And then recently, okay, so it was like uh, realized that, uh, yeah, this has like a very simple explanation uh, through Hecke algebra due to algebraic structure. And uh, like, but like one can, uh, like once uh, this was realized, like one can ask what else one can say about, you know, about this picture. In particular, it's natural to ask what we will do, what will happen if I will use some other generators. Yeah, so instead of using the, somehow the most natural generators, one can use 
uh, something else and what type of systems will appear and if, if they appear if i will use some other generators uh, of uh, random open hecke algebra sorry and yeah maybe before you move on just a clarification so the original problem was on the infinite half line but now yeah, you are yeah, working okay. with a finite n um, yeah this is not a problem so there is some standard probabilistic argument so one can yeah one can one can take infinite infinite permutation group uh so but essentially everything all else happens in finite permutation groups so there are no somehow problems uh, coming from infinity somehow in these questions yeah but that's correct so the, one needs like certain argument so i but i can say all the same for infinite permutation group for or like permutations of uh, integers of permutations of uh, positive integers okay thank you yeah other questions okay uh, so uh yeah so my next point will be that if i will consider some other generators specific generators of uh, hecke algebra uh, then i will also get uh, somehow some other interacting particle systems which were also very much present in the literature uh, but somehow not in connection uh, yeah not in like uh, in this way so they were like discovered by other means and one can also obtain them uh, from this construction from hecke algebra uh, so let me yeah probably be Okay, let me try. Let me try to uh, to say how this appears. Uh, so, if uh, like first of all, let me uh, let me define certain specific measure or like certain specific measure on permutations, which is called Mellow's measure. So, by definition, this is just measures how many um, like Q like the probability is proportional to the uh, like well essentially q to the number of inversions in this uh, permutation so this should be l of w l of w so the number of inversions uh, l of w and then q to the number of inversions but okay it will be more convenient to me like not the inversions but actually q to the number of pairs which are in the right order yeah so it's n times n minus one over two minus the number of inversions so the number of pairs which are in the correct order so for q equals zero this man so if i have uh, if the permutation groups is from one to n so for q equals zero then this measure is concentrated on uh, one word uh, which is like n and minus one and minus two up to one yeah so it's uh, only for q equals zero only this word will yeah it will be zero to the power uh, the power zero so somehow in the number of inversions is maximal and for general q somehow q it's somehow not very far from this like uh, longest word n and minus one and minus two up to one so there will be some minor situations but in general somehow the integers will be close to where they are in uh, the longest uh, element yeah, and in this like inverse world and uh, yeah so how it appears in like asap so for example if we have multi-species asap from one to n and we run it in the finite interval of length n for a long time it, this will be a stationary measure for asap so that's how uh, this mellows measure appears uh, and here are some uh, references And then one can use this Mellows measure in order to construct certain specific generators which uh, give rise to uh, which give rise to uh, certain other known systems. So let me probably say this just like on an example. So some uh, like more, more formal things written, but let me try to explain this by example. So let, let us consider. Let us let us um, see how one can obtain what so-called M exclusion TASEP. So M exclusion TASEP is uh similar to TASEP that we have seen so but like now in, the, in each position we have like previously we can have in each position only like zero particles or one particle and now when like when i say m exclusion that means that at every position i can have zero one two up to m particles at every position and otherwise the rules are the same so when the update happens one particle jumps from um like from the side to the neighboring side uh, but uh, uh, only if, we, if it has less than m particles and if it has exactly m particles then the exclusion rule works this the particle cannot jump so this m exclusion process uh, uh, can be obtained as a, as a uh, random work on Hecke algebra in the following way so we again start with for example like infinite or like large uh, finite permutation group and uh, yeah this picture shows how to get i think uh, for exclusion process so we get them into 
we get, we split all integers into intervals of length four, and then one needs to uh, consider a, an element of hacker algebra which is doing the following. So it is in every block we always somehow sort. So the key idea is that in every block we sort this particle to the right. We sort these particles to the right. So uh, here, yeah. So in this block there are two particles. They are they occupy two rightmost spaces. In this block there are there is one particle it occupies only like the rightmost place. And here are three particles they occupy okay the three rightmost places. So this can be done by this Mellos element in Q equals zero. That it just moves all particles to the right. And then the element uh, which we take as a generator of our random work is the following. So it says let us uh, the rightmost particle from here and leftmost uh, okay right rightmost position here and leftmost position from the next block. Let them interact. So let's have a usual update. So it stands for this T. Uh, let them have the usual previous update. And then after this update, let us again sort these particles. So let so after this update, the number of particles in blocks can change. And we, by, by, with the use of Mellor's measure, uh, like one can multiply by certain elements from Hecke algebra to again make them sorted. So this particle first jumped to the leftmost position here, but then by this sorting, it was moved, and now the, there are two particles in this block, and they occupy two rightmost positions. And then uh, there was a hole in a rightmost position here, and then after this sorting, these two particles uh, moved to the right, and they occupy two rightmost positions here. And then if we are able to somehow preserve this this uh, type of picture all the times with the use of uh, Hecke algebra, one can think about these blocks as just like number of particles which stand in uh, one position. So we, we can think about this picture as as this like vertical picture. Yeah? So there are four particles here, two particles here, one particle here, three particles here, and this interaction means that one particle from this uh, column jump and now is at this column. So uh, yeah, so I'm a little bit brief about this, um, like how exactly one can um, get uh, like this from Hecke algebra. But yeah, the point is that uh, somehow this like with the like multi-species as I said, it's like yeah, when we when we can do something with multi-species ASAP, that means that we can do this with multiplication from Hecke algebra. And for example, if we run yeah, so if we run somehow this for a very long time. Uh, this particle will, will eventually will jump to like this uh, to the uh, right most possible position, or like there is some sp specific element just multiplying by it, we will get uh, this sorting. So these elements stand for sorting these blocks, and then this T stands that like yeah, these particles jump from one to another. But the point is that one can use another like yeah, explicit set of generators instead of this TS. One can use another explicit set of generators and, and obtain another uh, another interactive particle systems that people are interested in and in general for general q uh like exactly this construction with exactly the same generators will give a certain known system which is called asap qm and uh, it also has certain degenerations into like for example like what is called q tasep or q tatser uh when m goes to infinity this becomes uh, such a system uh, and also I formulated this for a single species, so yeah, I had only particles and holes, but yeah, exactly this construction also works for, and actually it's um, easier to formulate it in a multi-species case, so one can get, uh, like one gets immediately a natural multi-species versions of all uh, these systems. And this is again, this is just like one example for one other specific choice of generators, but in general, like by playing with the generators, one can <coughs> recover actually a lot of, a lot of various like, in, and known uh, interaction, interaction particle systems and also probably get some new ones. And this somehow, I think it clarifies why like why these systems appear in the first place. Uh, so this gives like some other reason why they, so they, these systems sometimes they are called like integrable because one can do like certain com computations and analyze them like both asymptotically and non-asymptotically. And this gives some like this Hecke algebra structure and I, I would say that it gives like a very simple reason why these systems actually like exist and why they are integrable because they all share this uh, Hecke algebra um, uh, somehow uh, structure and they appear from like random works on Hecke algebra just like starting from uh, various generators. Uh, so uh, yeah, so yeah, this is uh, my uh, point for this part of the talk. And um, yeah, probably I have yeah several more minutes, so I will formulate just like one more. 
uh, result of uh, ah, okay so the judge is okay so one more uh, yeah one more like a uh, point is that uh, like in this construction I use Poisson processes yeah attached to generators but in, in general some systems can be obtained even like from a deterministic random open Hecke algebra which uh, might, may, might sound a bit strange but for example the known object which is called stochastic six vertex model uh, so it can it, it is obtained uh, I just say what elements I want to multiply and then I like the probability comes uh, from uh, this uh, from this part so an element of Hecke algebra generates a random permutation so then I tell you like some specific fairly complicated element of Hecke algebra which is obtained from as a product of several uh, several simpler ones and then like from this decomposition one obtains certain non-trivial probability measure and that's how the stochastic six vertex model appears so one can say some okay let me probably not go into details but like from some specific element of uh, Hecke algebra one appears certain like non-trivial and actually more complicated probability measure that appears from ACER slightly more complicated and uh, like one but one immediate corollary of all these constructions is that all these models all these like interaction, interaction particle systems which uh, appear in this way they all enjoy this class position symmetry which comes from involution from Hecke algebra and it can be we already have seen one example how it can be used in order to uh, produce certain non-trivial asymptotic results yes yeah? and actually so this was a sort of like baby example of uh, such application let me try to give one more asymptotic result uh, okay but here again so like yeah there are some uh, references like how this class position symmetry so it was used for like certain like asymptotic questions so first it was used in like in these papers um for the study of multi-species TASEP and then more recently uh yeah this was also used in uh these papers uh yeah and also like there are some papers uh which are okay which which are not uh which you which have not used this uh uh symmetry but also like this they studied similar phenomena all right so let me let, let me try to formulate one more asymptotic result where this um class position symmetry works and uh, first let me uh, recall uh, a fact about uh, TASEP so now I will uh, have TASEP with uh, which which leaves on all integers and which starts at the, from the following initial configurations so it's zero minus one minus two and to the left all positions are filled by particles and to the right of zero we have holes at one two three etc there are holes and then there is like uh, by now I, I, one can see classical result of Johansson uh, which answers how many particles after time t we have to the right of certain point zero or oh, it's uh, like more generally so if I define the function like height function uh, which is at, at, at position x how many particles are to the right of this position x at time t so this is this quantity h of x t and then uh, the theorem is that okay so in the first order this is given by t over four and then uh, something like more complicated happens for fluctuations so what is important the fluctuations are of order t to the power one third which is yeah so not uh, like not like in the central limit theorem classical and then okay so there are some uh, ugly constants but essentially so first if so if you see such a type of results for the first time so just think that u, u equals zero then the number of particles to the right of zero at time t it will be given by um yeah it will be given by uh like just like this term so divided by t to the power one third it will convert to a certain distribution which is a tracy winner distribution so if u equals zero and like for general u this is a generalization for like points uh, like yeah joint distribution for points in the neighborhood of zero and the correct scale in case to the power two thirds so this is known result so now let us uh, see how one can somehow use it in order to prove to prove something about multi-species system namely let us consider the following system let us consider that we have one second class particle somehow intermediate type so we have uh, like so strong particles from one to l and also to the left of minus l then we have like the weakest possible particles uh, from minus l to minus one and greater than l and then we put somehow one uh, middle class particle so it's uh, between hole and particle so one calls it second class particle at zero 
And so what happens when these particles try to jump? So these uh, particles jump uh, to the right and eventually will will reach this point zero. And these particles will jump to the right and eventually this particle will try to jump to the right as well. And then this is this is called like what is called shock. So this particle will this like two blocks, so this final block and this infinite block will interact with each other. And it's interesting to know what happens like with uh, second class particle which is placed at the point of shock. And it turns out this question. So this question about a uh, multi-species system in the sense that there are three types of particles. But using this uh, symmetry, this like involution that I um, talked about, one can reduce this question about like where where this second class particle, the, the uh, distribution of this position of the second class particle, to a certain quantity which is related only to this system. So this looks again. So if one doesn't use algebra, I think this is pretty surprising that this looks like as a different system. So this is like multi-type. So there is like second-class particle, and uh, yeah, so it's uh, space configuration is a bit uh, larger. But there is exact equality for given time t. Uh, like it's not asymptotic; it's just exact equality, which reduces like the position of second-class particle to a certain quantity related to uh, this process. And this comes from this, uh, so this somehow algebraic part, which comes from certain manipulation in the Hecke algebra. And then one can extract asymptotic results immediately. So just from this exact equality and from the asymptotic result of Johansson, one can exactly give like some specific answer where exactly this uh, second class particle is in, in the critical regime. So here, um, yeah, so all constants are like, so you choose in such a way that the answer is somehow the most, the, the, the most like rich, the richest one. And uh, this uh, suggests that L should be of the order t to the power two thirds, and then the position of second class particle is of order t to the power two thirds. And then one can, um, yeah, just apply the result of Johansson, one can see that its distribution is given as certain like difference of these area processes which uh, come from uh, the result of Johansson. And one can, yeah, one can play with this picture a bit more, which was done in uh, of uh, Patrick Ferrari and uh, myself uh, last year. So I guess my time is uh, over, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Alexei. Are there uh, any questions? I do have one question. Uh, I hope it's not uh, too technical. Uh, in in the, a few slides back, you, you talked about the M uh, exclusion process, and uh, there is uh, you, you mentioned that one can uh, ob obtain the um, model uh, of Povolotsky. Mm -hmm. um, and so th this model has interesting limits as Q goes to one, and perhaps one rescales times. So, but my general question was: um, Are there continuous versions of the, the of what you have explained? So, can one uh, take uh, colors and positions? Uh, as real numbers and obtain the corresponding uh, algebraic generators and uh, and study models arising as uh, continuous versions of the ones that you have uh, explained. Yeah, I think the, this is a very good question. It's a very interesting one. So I would expect that the answer is yes, but there is nothing in the present literature which would uh, give, which would give this. So this is somehow a continuous limit of Hecke algebra, which which is motivated exactly by these like continuous limits. So I understand this question uh, very well. But yeah, this. Yeah, this requires some rope. One, one needs to do this fusion, and then one needs to define everything correctly. So I think that uh, it will work, but yeah, I think there will be some technical difficulties, and this is not done at this moment. I have actually another question about something that you didn't say. Um, so you, you you mentioned that one can uh, play with the you, you can replace the symmetric group with something else and then it uh, it corresponds to variants of the the models. Um, yeah. I, I was wondering uh, so how how easy it is to understand what so for, for instance um, 
yeah, you, you say ASAP with the source correspond to hyperbolic tidal group. So how easy it is to know which other group you have to study and to know to what sort of boundary, what sort of boundary behavior you have for the processes? Is it that you have to open okay, a so textbook a of algebra? Of Sorry. Yeah, there is a certain like collection of uh, coxeter groups. Yeah, so there are these like types A, B, C, D. Okay, and there are like many, actually many other coxeter groups. Uh, but yeah, the most relevant are like this affine wild group, and this corresponds to models of ASAP which were actually studied. So like ASAP on the ring, this corresponds to affine wild group, and also like ASAP with uh, two sources. Yeah, with both boundaries, not trivial. It also can be obtained from um, from a fine wild group. And like it was one source when we, we have one source and like infinite in one in one uh, yeah so like positive integers with a source at zero, so this corresponds to hyper octahedral group. Uh, yeah, so I yeah that's it basically. But this is like what also started and started uh, what people study in probability. So this is uh, there is not much else what 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 one can can come uh, from. But then of course the question like what useful can be approved from this? Yeah, so algebraic structure is, is there, so it's it's more, more or less present in the papers, so like maybe slightly hidden form. But like what asymptotically one can get from this, uh, yeah, one one needs to yeah one needs to think somehow. So like so I have some sorts of results about like second class particle, this one second class particle about um, yeah also an ASAP with a source. Uh, but yeah, this is like just like a teeny portion of what one in principle can ask. Are there uh, other questions? Okay, I I, I just have one uh, about um, you know so in the first part of your talk you made a link between um, so yes so between the the eigenvalues and uh, and this uh, these positions of uh, particles and so uh, I wonder uh, is something known about the joint law uh, you have on on the right? Or can you derive things uh, from uh, from this connection? Uh, so so sorry. So so distribution of what? Uh, of uh, lambda one one lambda two two uh, lambda k k. But they are known, right? So this is uh, the distributions of a GUE matrix. Uh, yeah, but you take. I mean, the joint law about uh, of this. It's complicated, right? So what 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 what? The joint, just the joint law. Of lambda one one lambda two two lambda k k. Yeah, but it is no, it is known. Yeah, so for GV minor process, this joint law is is is, is known. Like it's there is some formula for for this, uh, for GV minor process. Yeah, so this, oh. this this is known. There is there is something explicit about this. Uh, so there, like yeah, the question yeah, what I do not know, like for example, how this changes in time. So the, but like this this thing is a known quantity. So this is yeah, one can write just like some formula for it. It's just uh, yeah, it's just easier okay. to write like this. It's explicit, okay. And so yeah, and my second question was about the evolution in time. So you said there are some steps, uh, but uh, here you don't uh, you don't have any results. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so the for random matrix is somehow so for for like for this thing, yeah, for random matrix somehow part. Okay, for this thing, uh, joint uh, law in time it also exists. Like okay, so this is stasis, but this is also like for, this is basically the same as for Dyson Brownian motion. Yeah, so we can consider here also like yeah to add here Dyson Brownian motion, it will be also like some time. So this will be this sort of um, process, uh, and then also like some joint distribution exists. And what I do not know. Is that like what process which appears here? So this is something very different from that brown motion. This will be a very jump, jumpy process, but it will have the property that at any given like time it will have the same distribution at the same time. Uh, but yeah, this joint uh, distributions I, I don't know, and this will, I think it will be somewhat interesting to understand. But uh, yeah, this is another question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, I have another question related to that. Um, if you go to a fully discrete model with also discrete time, do the the processes, the pi t and pi t inverse, uh, look more the same, or they are still very different? They are very different. No, this is yeah, this is not an artifact of time. Yeah, this is a jump process. This is like a jump process. It will make a jump of order square root of t, like for like large time t. It will make the uh, like this will be the typical size of a jump. It will be the same in the discrete time uh, as well. I guess. Yes, it will be the same at discrete time. Yes, I'm I'm quite sure. So yeah, this is not like yeah. This, 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 all, I think everything that I discussed it can be decided at discrete time, and yeah, all like phenomena will be the same. 
Are there further questions? Uh, yes, I, I, maybe I have a question. I don't know if uh, uh, there is an answer, but uh, you, so you, you make some duality between the echo algebra and on the, on the processes of particle. But the echo algebras, in fact, there are two analogs of, uh, of some group algebras, but there is also another kind of, of Q analogs, which are the, the quantum groups of Greenfeld and Jimbo. So there, is there some, some possibility to, to have some uh, random work of, of these quantum groups and to have some duality with some particle uh, system? Uh, yes, actually, this is how I think like many of the processes, which I have very briefly mentioned here, uh, appear. They appear actually people uh, like from quantum groups, and this is actually more explored. And uh, again, so this is all a little bit shaky, but I think in, in general, because like okay, Hecke algebra and quantum groups, yeah, they're like this like Schulweil duality on this level. And so uh, that's why I think that somehow like essentially one can use quantum groups in order to describe study them, and one can use also Hecke algebra to study them. Uh, so yes, quantum groups are very relevant for all these uh, type of questions. But frankly speaking, I think Hecke algebras are simpler, <laughs> and like all constructions are simpler. And also, like all, for example, the, even like this simple involution in Hecke algebra, yeah, I don't know. Like yeah, people probably yeah either didn't care or didn't know whether how, how to see this from the quantum group. I see. Okay. Thank you. More questions? So if not, let's uh, thank you again, uh, Alexei.